Nathan, uh, we're taking the most expensive, the most off-road worthy GMC Sierra to Moab. Yeah, we are, uh, 1500 that is, because we've taken its big brother to Moab, but this one has the three liter straight six diesel, one of our favorites, and yeah, we're about to see if it's actually efficient. Yeah, so we're gonna find out not only how good it is off-road with dual lockers, but actually how fuel efficient it is going there. What does the sticker say? Uh, 19 city, 20 highway. So you think we can beat that? Yeah, I think I, I maybe. All right, so we're gonna use our typical two click method. We're gonna fill it up. We're gonna wait for it to click and then we'll wait 30 seconds, fill it up some more. And then we're gonna get on the highway. And uh, after we do the off-roading, we'll let you know what kind of fuel economy you got. I think I could do about 22, 23. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, I think yeah. I, the thing is, is that it's heavier with all this stuff that's on uh, with AED, right? So it's it's a very heavy truck. This thing's around 6,000 pounds, and the tires are not exactly what I would call perfect for... Uh, Unrolled low, performance? Yeah, yeah, low rolling resistance, I was about to say. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, let's that 3-liter Duramax, dude, that's a gem of an engine. It is a gem of an engine. It's recently been updated, too, and so it's even better now. I mean, really, it is my favorite GM engine. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with, um, I like 22, 2.2. Two. So same with, yeah, so we're on the same yeah, page. we're on the same page. You know what Tommy's going to say. What are you, what's he going to say? Tommy, what are you going to say? 12. He said 12. 12. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, it's 30 seconds? Uh, just about. Okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, that was a lot. Yeah. Oh. It's nearly a half a gallon. Yeah, well, uh, and diesel is uh, 340, 350 a gallon here. That's not bad. <laughs> a lot of people are going to be upset about that. Sorry, it's Colorado. Let's hit the road. Yeah. All right, so before we tell you what the fuel economy is, we made it right here to Moab, Utah. And we're going to take this around this very difficult course to test how good it is off-road, but I'm going to give the key to somebody who's a much better off-roader than me, and that is Tommy. Woo! That's right, guys. So I'm going to drive. Nathan's going to come in next to me. We're going to tell you all about the uh, Sierra 84X AEV, and we're going to put it through its paces on our new Moab test loop. What are we calling it? We're calling it the Moab test loop. Come on, Nathan. What are we calling it? Moab test loop. We can do better than that. The bowl of death. The bowl of death. We are going <laughs> on the bowl of death. But before we do that, you want to give them a walk around of this truck? Yeah, sure. Now the Sierra AT 4 x is already one of the most capable full-size trucks you can buy because where the Raptor and the TRX went for that extreme desert running route, Sierra and Silverado in the ZR2 as well went for the ultimate rock crawler. So this is one of the few vehicles for sale today that have a genuine front and rear locking diff. And then the guys over at AEV got their hands on it and added on a bunch of accessories that of course are fully covered by your GMC warranty and you can finance and all that kind of thing so it's got stuff like these rock rails down the side front and rear bumper it also sits about 0.4 of an inch higher than other AT4X trucks but Nathan that comes at a little bit of a cost <laughs> it's a lot $88,500 wow it's just a lot of money that's just a lot of money and the question is and we're gonna find this out on the trail is the AEV stuff worth that added money? Should you just get the AT4X or should you just get like a standard Sierra? We're about to find out. Nathan, one thing you gotta realize about these sliders is they work, well, we'll see if they work Hardly fantastic. as steps. But getting in and out, it's pretty- <laughs> They suck. I'm sorry, but I know they're great for, you know, protecting the underside of the vehicle, yes but they're not great for getting up and over. With this AEV front bumper, we're looking at a 32 and a half degree approach angle and 11.2 inches of ground clearance, which is up a little bit over the standard AT4X. The bowl of death, as Nathan so aptly named it, starts off with a really hard obstacle. It's called the wall. This is a very vertical, very steep climb that will test the trucks. Break over, approach, departure, and of course, traction. Now, I'm currently in four low, nothing locked up, and we're gonna see what happens as we approach the wall. So, we're gonna take it at a nice, even rate. We got that front camera, which is helping us, because we can't see anything from this angle. So, even with the lockers turned off, disengaged, we're doing pretty good. We're scraping pretty good on the other side. Oh, there. yeah, I can feel it. Okay, so let me do this. Let me try engaging the rear locker. 
Okay. We got that nice torque out of that three liter inline six. Yeah, we are high center. That yeah, length is not working in our advantage no, today. No, it isn't. Um, you get 495 foot pounds of torque, which is really good. Are you gonna use all the lockers or just one? We we might as well lock them lock both. Lock them up. all, baby. That's what I do. So we're doing front and back lockers now. We're taking a new line. Here we go. Okay, we're all locked up. Pretty quick engagement out of those lockers. Which I really like. Yep. Try to maintain some momentum. 33 inch well. Oh, that slider does its job. <laughs> okay, I take back almost everything I said about it. <laughs> because it took pretty much the entire brunt to that. Yeah, we just wasted our um weighed most of the truck down on that slider. Oh, that slider, I could really feel that. Not in a horrible way too, it's just in a painful, expensive way. And that's one of the reasons that you do want to buy the AEV out of the box, yep. is because it has the increased strength of the skid plate, the rock sliders. Um, this thing is ready to tackle just about anything out of the box, right? Agreed. This engine is performing phenomenally. Even at just off idle, you just dip your toe into that throttle pedal. You get that little whir of that engine as it starts to spool up the turbo, and then off you go. Exactly, and it's very easy to modulate. Plus, it sounds so cool. It, it's a, if you like diesel sounds, then it, it does have that diesel characteristic to it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not too loud. Now, Nathan, the price, almost 90K. Ridiculous. It's an expensive truck. It's so, uh, look, I'm not gonna give GM grief over this because everybody does it. Ford has a truck that easily will sit in the same range and yep. so does Ram. Mm -hmm. You know, they all have very expensive vehicles that are just loaded with all those toys and everything else. You can get a truck this capable without having to spend this much money. And that's an important point, but then you don't get massaging seats. Then you don't get the sunroof. You know what I mean? There's, yeah, I know. there's all these things that people want, and that's what they're paying for. And that's at the end of the day, that's why this is so bloody expensive. And look, like the AEV package is something like sixty-eight ninety-five. It's about seven thousand bucks. About yeah. seven grand more than a uh, than a standard AT4X. Right. And for that, you get you know the bumpers, the sliders, the wheels, the underbody protection. It says AEV on the seats too. Yep. Looks good. Yeah. Looks really good. I am not being paid by AEV to say this. Is that I like the way that the fit and finish. And they actually work with the automaker in terms of safety and compliance in order to make these components. So 100%. Uh, we actually have a bunch of videos on that with Andre working with the people at AEV and at the factory showing how everything goes together. So that's positive. But the other side of it is, of course, um, every time you slap on these extra components, you're making a much heavier vehicle. So keep that in mind. Heavy is not necessarily your friend when it comes to off-roading. I know, I'm one to talk. <laughs> So we're, we're uh, kind of testing out some of its uh, clearances here on these larger boulders. The articulation's pretty good. It is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. A little rear bumper action there. Well, that's why you get the beefy bumper, isn't it? It's a good point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you had the, the painted bumper, that would have been there, a pretty there'd expensive... There would have been less paint on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you go and add on these really expensive and, of course, uh, heavy components? which will help with some things, but are detrimental to others, or do you just leave it alone, or do you just strip everything out? It's hard to say. It really depends on what type of off-roading you're gonna do. But look, we've used that slider now, what, six times well, over the, these obstacles? The thing is, is the wheelbase is so long to pick up on these crew cab trucks yeah. that you really do need some kind of slider if you want your rockers to stay looking good. And if you want your doors to open. Nathan, compared to the Raptor, compared to the TRX, when you're mm. out here in Utah doing these slow climbs, this truck is so much happier. It is because it's not as wide. Yeah, That's just the true. bottom line. The, the These trails are not very big. Some some sections are, ooh, there's the sliders again and again. Yeah. Um, and if you're in a Raptor, as an example, uh, as great as that vehicle is, your wheels are gonna be touching two sides of this one particular obstacle right here. Yeah. I mean, and you're gonna have to straddle things that you didn't want to straddle. Now, first thing's making I say Suzuki 7, right? but that's just me. So, I got the lockers disengaged right now. Oh, you do? Bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I turned them off just to help with Well, like, so you could turn around these uh, corners. It makes yep. sense, because there's there's some um, windy spots here. We're actually using this front camera quite a bit. Here, let me show that to you guys. That's I got it good. That, yeah, look at the quality of that too. The quality is excellent. Yeah. All right, let's see what happens here. I think regardless of what we do, we're gonna bottom this thing out at least a little bit here. Oh yeah, we're not gonna clear that if we took that 
slightly harder line, so we'll take the slightly easier line here. Passenger, and we are fully on that. Yeah, a little bit of a rock. That's okay. Keep going. Okay, right, <laughs> That's what we it's for. We are using those sliders today. Um, look, I think my big takeaways with this truck, Nathan, the four-wheel drive system, incredible. Yep. The um, locking diff engagement, incredible. That's Huge. It works so well. Camera system is great, yep. but the big winner is this turbo diesel engine. Out here, it's so easy to modulate, it just makes those subways. Even though this truck is doing this quite well, the, the size of it is still to its detriment. And if I had the choice of any GM truck to, to do this in, I would be in the... Um, Colorado ZR2. Colorado ZR2. Yes, maybe the Bison. So I'm... Not sure about the bison. Though. Yeah, but Colorado Canyon is just a smaller form factor. They really are awesome, but if I can get this engine to put it in the Colorado, I would be thrilled. Yeah, that would that be like, would be cool. That would be that awesome. inline six diesel in that can little. Can you imagine truck. that? So I've gone into terrain mode now. We're in L1, uh -huh. and the truck is actually holding the brake for me, and then I am just modulating the speed with the throttle. Which is a little bit of an interesting experience. Yeah, so you don't have to play with the uh, cruise control to make it go quicker, you just I, use throttle? I think I can do it paddle shift. I think if I paddle shift in L2, that's gonna allow a faster speed. There's so many different There's systems. So many different there. systems, and to be honest, I just don't like many of them. I yeah, just, it's yeah. better just to drive it with your foot, in my experience. So that's what we're gonna do. And it works perfect. Yeah. Like this, right? Like it's a pretty narrow section here. Not yeah. certainly not we're not gonna have any issues, but compared to like what we'd find in the Colorado or Canyon. Exactly. You could just whoop. Or the Tacoma. Or the Tacoma. In the future we're gonna be getting our hands on a TRD Pro yep. at some point in time. And that would be really cool to take on this very same course. I'd be curious to see what it would do. Yeah. But overall, Nathan, I think it's a winner. I think it's an excellent truck. Great truck. Well, let's do this. We're gonna cut back to the gas station and figure out what the gas station performance was. Damn, diesel's expensive here. How much is it? Four forty-eight. That's uh, like a buck more over here. Two-click method. What does the truck say? Uh, thirty-two point. Uh, Twenty. Thirty-two. Uh, Let's try again. Twenty-three point two. And at first I was a little dubious, but we've been going downhill so much, and this thing was just like under two thousand RPM for almost the entire trip. You know, I've been driving that Tacoma. Yeah. Truck says I've been getting twenty. 3.1 miles. Yeah, but you weigh as much as the bed on this thing. <laughs> Maybe with one of the bumpers. All right. That took a second to get going. Yeah, there we go. Okay. 13.795. That's good that the youngster's doing the math. Yeah, because I'd blow it. 24.7. Wow, oh, that's yeah. double what Tommy estimated. Yeah. You said 12. We have it on camera. We said 22. Yeah, so 22, 24. So this is not the first time that we've had this with a General Motors vehicle where it's gone well over what it actually was saying. That's like the opposite of some other yeah, automakers. It's almost 25. That is really good. That's really good. Yeah, that's better than the mid-sized truck. So, so, even though this is a premium at the Bend Your Over gas station, yes. it still may pay off to get a diesel truck. Well, you, that, pay, you pay a bonus to a diesel. Well, yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. more expensive, and yeah. they're heavier, and I get all that. Yeah. Diesel mechanics. But I got like, like five or six hundred miles of range in this thing, depending on what I'm doing. That's incredible, yeah. Yeah, you yeah I, I get like 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, check out altfl.com for more off-roading and all of our other reviews. We'll see you next time.